Hello, and welcome to this edition of Central Connecticut Now, the program that brings you closer to the newsmakers in our community and the people that cover them every day. I'm Mike Schroeder, publisher of the New Britain Herald and Bristol Press, and today my guest is Justin Malley, who's Director of Economic and Community Development for the City of Bristol. Welcome. Michael, how are you? <laughs> Good to have you on the show. I understand this is kind of a new title for you. Well, we have a, our department name is changing. Uh, historically, the department that, that I've worked in is called the Bristol Development Authority. Yep. Um, my board decided that it made sense to actually change our name to be more reflective of what we do every day, and really that is fostering economic and community development in Bristol, so that change is slated to take place actually tomorrow night officially, so uh, we're just getting used to that new title. Let me ask you a question. What does community development mean? Community a development? A lot of people would be able right. to tell you what economic development right, is. Right, right, right. Talk about bringing new businesses mm -hmm. in and all that. Sure, sure. So a large part of what my office works on, um, we receive, the city of Bristol receives each year funding from the federal government, specifically housing, uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. Yep. Um, and we use those funds to support low and moderate income people in the community. So we do that in a couple of ways. Um, one program that we have is very, that's very successful is our housing rehabilitation program. We help folks, if you, if you make under a certain amount each year, your income, got, got, uh, your income qualifies. Um, we can help with 50% and in some cases up to 100% of major home improvements, right? Wow. So that helps uh, in certain cases keep people in their homes. We're improving homes, we're improving neighborhoods. That's one way we hit on the community development piece of that. Another way is that we actually fund organizations that help those who are low and moderate income in the community. Everything from the Boys, Bristol Boys and Girls Club, Bark, United Way, many other great groups within the community. So uh, that's where sort of the community development aspect sure. takes place within our office. And then we're, you know, we hold the Bristol Farmers Market. We do, we support the Mum Festival and other great festivals within Bristol, the West End Festival. Those are community events, mm -hmm. not necessarily business development. So again, we thought it uh, important to put community development within our department's title so folks understand what we do. Sure. Well, let's go back just a second. How many homes do you guys uh, assist in rehabilitating every year? It varies each year. Uh, it's quite a bit. Uh, we're, we're shooting for at least 50 homes a year, but again, it's pretty good. Yeah, and it, and it varies. We've had a, actually a very strong year, um, the year that we're currently in. My uh, team member, David Sagro, who's our housing and rehabilitation specialist, is fantastic, doing a great job helping people uh, and actually just carrying out the, the, the office's mission. Wow. So you, you can have multiple projects going at one time. Oh, yeah. Of layered on top of each other. Well, that's what makes it fun, right? I mean, <laughs> so we have community development projects, housing rehab, farmers markets, uh, business development projects keeps life interesting. Okay, let's switch over to business development projects. What's in the pipeline now? <laughs> so we have, the good news is, is that we're busy, right? So that's, <laughs> so that's a good thing within, within our business. Um, you know, what, what a lot of folks like to talk about is, our, is the recent downtown growth mm -hmm. that we're experiencing in Bristol. So we've had a, con, a concerted effort over the years to, to bring uh, downtown development up to a level playing field with other areas of the city, right? So most folks understand that Farmington Avenue, Route 6, um, as an example, traffic counts are quite high. Um, yeah. It's fairly easy to do business out there, right? So we get interest from the national companies and local companies as well. They wanna be out there. They want that those traffic counts. They yeah. want that many eyes on their business. Sure. We have other areas in the city that are like that. Middle Street, Route 229 from Bristol heading into the Southington is very strong. Downtown historically is not, we haven't been able to meet those traffic count numbers. Yep. Um, so in order to put downtown on sort of a level playing field, we've created different incentive programs that are specific for the downtown area. Other things that we've done, our, 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 our zoning officials are very smart. They've um, developed uh, guidelines for certain type of businesses 
to be able, allowed downtown and, and to really not be allowed in other, in other areas of the city. Mm. So breweries are a great example. Sure. Right? So a brewery um, is, is welcome and, and eligible to come downtown, not necessarily in other areas of the city. Very got smart. It. Very smart, in my opinion. Now we've got. Are there two breweries downtown now? Yeah. So the, one's like on what uh, Middle Street? Middle there, Street. There's one on Center. Center. Center Street. I was confused. Middle and Center. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I just can't get past. Understandable. That. So on Center Street is Firefly Hollow Brewery. Yeah. They've been there for for a number of years. Yeah. Huge Firefly guy. Um, <laughs> they came in. They're one of the really one of the first um, successful craft brewers in the state. There, there were others mm. before Firefly, but they were one of those, one of the first. Got it. Um, and then more recently, a company called Better Half Brewing yep. opened up on North Main Street, uh, just uh, down the street from City Hall, uh, and they're doing great as well. So two breweries downtown. We have uh, a, a new coffee shop in the downtown area called Real Cafe. Yep huge fan of Eduardo and what he's doing. And then we have even a, a, a different independent coffee shop called The Roasted Bean that just opened uh, just off of downtown uh, on Terryville <laughs> Avenue going towards Plymouth. Got it, yep. So when you talk about a community with two independent coffee shops, two breweries, life is good. We're heading yeah. in the right direction. That's, and they, they're not, they haven't been there for 50 years. Exactly. They all, they, all pretty, pretty much all new businesses, a lot of energy there. So you've got the, we've got those breweries, mm -hmm. we've got the coffee shops. What other types of businesses are, are trending toward the Bristol hometown yeah. feel? Yeah. So again, to, to your point earlier, we have a lot of sort of, we're juggling a lot of balls in the air. Uh, and thankfully there's some diversity there. So we have like food and drink, right? So yep. we've got the coffee shops, um, the breweries, we're working on a couple of restaurant projects. Uh, but then we have what I consider our foundation of our economy in Bristol. It's our, our high tech manufacturers, right? So we have companies that are either um, coming in and new to Bristol mm -hmm. or just as important, in some ways, even more important, we're keeping the companies that we have here happy and growing, right? Got so it. as an example of a, a manufacturer that's growing, let's see, so there's a, there's a great company called Precision Express Manufacturing. So the owners um, uh, are fairly new to this country. Um, they started up their own shop on Emmett Street um, not too long ago, a few years ago, and have outgrown that space. It was about a five to 7,500 square foot manufacturing space. They've grown and actually just purchased uh, more like a 30,000 square foot space around the corner on Dolphin Road mm. in Bristol, right? So great story. Immigrants to this country worked incredibly hard and are hiring you know, more people at their, at their shop and growing in Bristol, right? Yep. Um, so we, we've assisted th that company with a few different um, incentives. And then uh, even we were at Lab, uh, Lab Security last week. Lab Security's been in Bristol for probably about 15 years. Um, they came to Bristol from, other, from another area. Mm -hmm. And Lab Security um, designs and manufactures uh, lock pins, so parts for manual locks. And they're expanding and diversifying. Oh. Uh, but there's a company that just added about 5,000 square feet to its facility, allows them to hire more people. They're doing well. Uh, so it's a little bit of everything. You've, we're helping manufacturers expand and grow, bringing new ones in, and then I, even you know breaking into the food and beverage uh, and downtown growth. That's terrific. Well, when you talk about incentives, what the city does, mm -hmm. what are examples of those types of yeah. incentives? So incentives can take different forms dep depending on the company, depending on the project. Um, to, to talk about downtown a little bit, so. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, there's a f the federal government actually initiated a new um, incentive to help investors and to help businesses um, save on their federal tax uh, obligations, right? It's called the, op the Opportunity, Opportunity Zone Program. So yep. obviously we applied to take part in that and we are awarded an Opportunity Zone for our downtown district, mm -hmm. right? On top of that, we also uh, worked hard for uh, actually over the course of probably two years to establish what's called a tax increment financing zone downtown. So those two zones overlap. Um, 
TIF is a, is a, it, it can be lengthy to explain, but it essentially it helps uh, increase development within an area by doing two things. Um, it allows communities to set aside tax revenue that's generated in that district, yep. right? Um, allows communities set aside tax revenue to complete infrastructure improvements and other, really just infrastructure improvements and create other programs. But then it's, it's th those funds are directed within the district, right? So it helps the city, as an example, yep. do streetscape work, right? Uh, and we don't have to go out to bond. We don't have to request new funding for it. We have a mechanism to fund that. Got it. it also helps developers in certain cases um, help make financing deals work. Uh, they work with us on it and helps them put together what's called their financing stack. Sometimes it's difficult to fund projects, um, uh, really in any community. The revenues on a project have to be able to have to be high enough to service the debt on the project. I'm getting into the weeds a little <laughs> bit, but the program helps developers do just that. Has to pay for itself. It's got to pay for itself. So when they when it can't, TIF can actually step in. Tax increment financing can step in and help the project succeed. Are there any particular projects that you could point to that have been successful mm -hmm. using those types of incentives? So I'm working on a, a tax increment financing project now. Um, so it's not complete, but the developer is looking at um, purchasing and, and uh, redeveloping two uh, older buildings on Main Street. Mm -hmm. we, we call them the, the Funk Building and the Eagle Building. They're all, both owned by Bristol Health now. Uh, but Bristol Health is interested in selling them off. Got it. This developer would go in and, and complete uh, a veterans housing project. Um, Bristol Press actually covered this project. Yes. So this developer does projects throughout the country. And TIF, again, tax increment financing, is very popular in other areas of the country. It's just coming into Connecticut now. So we're working with that developer uh, on, a, on a TIF project now. Um, the op when the Opportunity Zone was announced, um, we have development projects and developers that are looking at those zones throughout the country. Um, so it helps me meet those folks, sure. right? So it's inter that program has introduced me to a developer that's looking uh, at a pretty significant project. I can't get too in depth, yep. um, but the project would be at the corner of Route 6 and North Main Street in Bristol. It's the former Mamazio building. That building was demolished years ago and it's sort of been a, a vacant lot um, for, for many years. Finally, we're actually going to be able to, to redevelop that lot into something very special uh, that we'll be able to announce soon. Yeah. Now, is that city land? No, private, privately owned land. Um, that that developer. So I met that developer, um, and and they were actually looking at a different site within Bristol, but it didn't work for various reasons. Mm -hmm. But we we're able to uh, introduce the developer to that site, uh, and it and it, it's worked out. That's great. Yeah. Um, there are, you know, obviously there's there's spots all around town that are either empty buildings, mm -hmm. vacant lots, whatever. Not to mention the the whole uh, old downtown, you know, depot. Uh, yeah, center area. square. Yeah, and uh, you know, what types of businesses come looking around for? Mm -hmm you know, test the water, so to speak, and you're probably one of the first calls they make. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope to be. Uh, and it really, it, could, it runs the gamut, right? So we've been, um, if, if you look at some of the, the vacant spots in downtown as an example, we've been lucky enough to, to work with some newer food and drink companies. Mm. Um, you know, the coffee shop that I mentioned, Real yes. Cafe, is an example. The brewery, Better Half Brewing, is a, is a recent example. Um, I think that um, entrepreneurs are recognizing that there's something special about a downtown. They don't necessarily want to be on a, a high-traffic thoroughfare. Mm. Um, there are other, you know, organizations that want to be there. Sure. But I think that, you know, food and drink specifically, um, they want to be in a downtown environment. They want to be surrounded by other businesses that are similar, that are doing well. One of our challenges in downtown Bristol is um, we don't have a ton of unique, uh, independently owned food and drink establishments. Mm. One of the problems is we don't have a ton of spaces that would support, that are turnkey, as I say, um, 
to open up a restaurant, sure. we have to uh, work with spaces that, 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 and, and convert them to food and drink use. So uh, it's a challenge that way. Yep. But we've created a grant program for downtown specifically. So back to the incentive talk. Um, because again, we recognize this. You need spaces that you could actually host new businesses within. So we have a downtown grant program and one of the target industries, we'll say, is food and drink to help new businesses build out their space mm. um, to support food and drink. Uh, so, uh, so we can expect to be able to have, uh, you know, a Thai place, an Indian place, a, a Cambodian place. Yeah. Eventually. We'll get there. You know, Rome <laughs> wasn't built in a day. Yeah. We have a Thai place, by the way, yep. that's very good, but um, that's a long-term visioning. And sometimes yep. in government, um, your people, uh, folks get stuck in being reactive. Um, we're trying to plan a little bit so that we can s sort of slowly but steadily create an environment downtown that will support growth, right? And support all those types of restaurants and more, hopefully. Stay on the strategic road, so to speak. Yeah, you can, it's you know, easy it, to it's get off It's a winding track. road sometimes, but right. you want to keep going in the same, the right direction. We're just, that North Star is, uh, we want a downtown that's has some energy, folks can feel comfortable going, going to, uh, and again, it's the kind of downtown that you would go to because you can't find those types of places elsewhere in Bristol. Right, so a brewery. Yeah. You're going downtown if you want to go to a brewery. Yep. You know, so um, we're just following that. Like I said, that goal, and we'll get there. Uh, what do you think is the biggest get Bristol's had in the last few years, as that's, far as a business mm, moving into town? Uh, that's a hard question to answer. You know, we've we, we've had quite a few. So even. So we have a, uh, a project that it, it's still, we're still early, but you all have covered it. Sure. Um, and it's, the, so the Doubletree Hotel down on Route 229. Yeah. Um, we have a very close relationship with the owner of that hotel and those, and the folks who run it. And who put a lot of money into yeah, redeveloping. Tremendous reinvestment there. Um, and that's going to continue because the growth that's planned for that hotel, and I can't get into specifics other than sort of what's been reported, but there's going to be a, 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 a second hotel that's constructed in an event center that's just gonna knock the community socks off and the regions. Um, that's a project that's really exciting um, that we're getting very close to really being able to provide details on. Um, you know, the, the, the hospital project, I cannot not mention that, right? Yeah, so the, sure. the Bristol Health Project on Center Square was monumental for us. Um, you know, we, I, I've been to conferences and it's been said, when you have a community anchor that would like to grow in your community, you, you're at, you should be at their doorstep yeah. and asking how you can help. And that's what we did, right? So um, Bristol Health's new building downtown, 60,000 square foot medical office facility. Yeah. Um, is tremendous and it's and it's creating energy, right? Sure. Um, folks are noticing. I always thought that a medical use downtown uh, made a lot of sense because um, when you have a doctor or you need to uh, have a procedure within that building, yep. you don't have any choice. You have to go there. So it's exposing folks yep. to the downtown area once again. A lot of folks in Bristol, it's been a while since they've come downtown. Well, they don't they don't have a choice now. They have to go get their procedure done. And the, the hope is that when they're down there, they take a look around. Oh, didn't know that that business was mm. over there. I'll have to come back downtown. So, um, you know, over the last few years, Bristol Health has been, that project's been tremendous for us. Are we any closer on getting now other development going in that center square area? Yeah. So we, we, we're we working on two projects now um, on a smaller scale when compared to Bristol. Yeah, yeah, sure. But that's okay, right? So the idea, again, is that we're, we want to have sort of consistent growth. And it could be, it's not going to happen overnight, but we, we like to line up projects so we know sort of what we're working on over the next few years. So on center square, there are two projects um, that we're working on now. Two separate uh, buildings. One would be a, a, a mixed use building on Main Street, actually just north, just next to Bristol Health. Um, 
And that's the type of building that you see downtown. So that's yep. a uh, building in which retail uh, sits on the first floor. And, and residential there are, and, above. Yeah, there are res there's residential above. And then sort of on the opposite side of the Bristol Health Building, we're working on a, uh, more of a commercial building th that would have a, a combination of retail and office actually upstairs. Similar sized buildings mm -hmm. um, that, you know, I, th I think that we want to be methodical in the way we look at Center Square. We don't have to jump at the first use that we, th we think works. Mm. Uh, again, we're trying to be smart in the way we plan it because you get one shot and uh, we want to do it right. That's excellent. Well, we, speaking of, you know, the, the, the past mm -hmm. uh, attempts at things, you know, over the prior to this, you know, probably ending a couple of years ago now was the Renaissance Downtown's mm -hmm. plan, mm -hmm. which a lot of work and a lot of effort and, mm -hmm. you know, I think it was, I think people tried. Yeah. And, and it was a, a lot of activity and a kind of... Uh, fell to my understanding is you know financial concerns basically yeah. when it came down to it they couldn't get the money to do it they did a lot of great work the renaissance yeah. folks and i in the vision that they proposed um i think that was something that most of the community could, could agree is a noble effort sure. right to move towards that vision so although it didn't work out at that point from a financing perspective which was not um, out of the norm yeah. at that point um, Renaissance helped us actually a lot, uh, out a lot in sort of establishing a vision for downtown. We may not get to the level that was proposed on the, and that imagery that Renaissance sure. provided, but it, it helped guide us in kind of understanding what was needed. And then Bristol Health came in, yep. you know, and, and again, community anchor, we support Bristol Health, Bristol Health supports the city of Bristol. It just made a ton of sense and it's a great starting point. It's a great anchor for that for that piece of property. For the private development that's going to continue off of that, mm -hmm. has the financing, uh, financial situation changed? Is there more availability? Is there, has, uh, has anything changed to allow something like that to yeah. be more easily you know, executed? It's a tough question to answer only because financing in every project is different. Yeah. Um, you know, some developers, have financing in hand before they even start, right? Other developers have are obtaining financing through their through silent partners, right? Sure. Others are approaching a traditional bank. Others are approaching other institutions. So, it's tough. Um, I can tell you from a credit perspective, I think things have opened up um, for development. Residential is doing really well in Bristol, right? So mm -hmm. our apartment market very very hot, very strong. Um, so developers are interested in that, right? So that they're looking for a, a use that they can guarantee a certain amount of revenue. Uh, and that's what the banks look for as well. Um, so I, I, I'm hoping that credit's opening up. Uh, and again, our incentive programs are designed to supplement that. Well, uh, I mean, it's going to be in the next few years, pretty important to Bristol that some of these developments get positioned mm -hmm. just to show you know the the energy of the community yeah. is still moving forward right and uh, I think that you're going to be here to see it how long have you been with the city I sure hope so um, so I've been with the city for 12 close to 13 years now I believe um, in this position for about four um, so it I've been able to see, I, I came in maybe at the at the tail end of the Renaissance yeah. time period. Um, and for me, it's it, it's been it's been fun to watch downtown transform even in small ways. Again, I, I think that companies like Better Half Brewing, the coffee shop, these types of businesses make you feel good, right? About living, playing, working in Bristol. Uh, and that's what we're looking for. A large part of our effort within my office is around marketing the city, right? And of course, we're marketing to developers and to businesses, but we're also marketing to our residents. Well, that's a great way to end our conversation, but I hope yeah. you'll join us again soon. Yes. Thanks for joining us on Thank this you, edition yeah. of Central Connecticut Now. And we hope you'll be joining us in our audience again next time when we'll sh bring on another newsmaker that'll educate us on another subject. Have a great time.